Before we even get started, should you buy one of these? Well, it entirely depends on what your use case is. If you're predominantly doing assembly of new boards, then you probably want to look at getting a reflow oven like I reviewed already here on the channel. If you're doing repairs, well, you might want this because you can preheat the boards when you're doing repairs and SMD soldering. This is actually the primary use case for me. I use this just to preheat the board to avoid thermal shock. Now remember, you want to make sure that you put your boards on before you preheat the hot plate. That way they come up to temperature the same as the hot plate itself, thereby avoiding that thermal shock. There's not much to say about this particular unit and how it arrived. It arrived with no damage, lots of foam, good packaging, no issues. Instructions are pretty clear. You set a temperature and it does it. The controls are intuitive. If you can run a thermostat on your refrigerator or in your house, you can run the thermostat on this. I won't tear it down. There are other videos on YouTube showing the tear down. This is a pretty simple, simple temperature control system and just a heating element. The key is the fit and finish of the entire build plate, so to speak, and the size and thermal mass of it. This is a large unit, which is really good for doing reflow work. You want a lot of thermal mass if you can get it. it takes time to get it up to temperature but that's a good thing this episode brought to you in part by pcb way check them out at the link below for your next electronics project they offer competitive rates for all pcbs parts and assembly as well as 24 7 tracking of your order from start to finish I've tested this out pretty extensively now, and this is me using it for my rescue boards. It's just a 0805 surface mount resistor, a pull-up resistor on the SPI line, one single component. Hardly worth firing up the reflow oven, but it does work better than this hot plate for SMD reflow only. But this is kind of neat because you can get the exposure and the hands-on and see what it's doing kind of good for somebody if they want to test out their solder or want to see the music as it happens so to speak it's it's nice having it right in front of your face and you'll see here I start from cold and dark this is a good habit to get into with your boards the boards are already on the hot plate and I fire it up and set my temperature so everything comes up to temperature at the same time it's just a good practice to get into that way you won't Go ahead and shock, thermally shock or crack any solder joints or, or any of the, if you're doing rework on something with BGAs, you definitely want to be cognizant of this. Bring everything up to temperature together and slowly. And in the end, we're left with perfectly reflowed resistors. No issues. A little bit of flux on there to clean up, but that's standard and yeah, no problem. It does the job. If you're in the market for a rework or reflow station such as this, well, this one might be the one for you. I have nothing bad to say about it. It warms up quickly, the temperature holds accurately, no bad smells, and the surface of it is really durable and rugged, really heavy duty. If I had to point out one and only one flaw of this thing, it's the physical size. It's its strength and weakness. It is a very large unit and takes up some real estate in your workshop. If you're doing small boards such as these, well, it's very big and overkill. But if you're into doing like motherboards or something a little bigger to do rework, this is what you want. It's a great size. It's got lots of thermal mass and lots of surface area should be noted that for the price they're selling these it truly isn't worthwhile messing around trying to make your own or DIY a solution. The price of this is basically not much more than the components at least where I am here in Canada so why not have a nice polished really really good solution. I'm Eric thanks for joining me in the Make Me Lab today.